Every once in a while, a band uh, can come out of nowhere and release a song that speaks to an entire generation, the deepest reaches of the soul. In 2006, a band from Texas put out a deeply personal song that went all the way to number two on the charts. Up next, a can't miss interview with the lead singer of the rock band Blue October about this composition. Hey music junkies, professor of rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. Make sure right off the bat to click the subscribe button below so you never miss out on our daily content. You never know who's gonna be on here from day to day. And check us out on Patreon for even more exclusives. Now in 2006, Blue October released their fourth studio album. It was called Foiled. Uh, a little earlier than that, the band started to break through with the song Calling You from their album Consent to Treatment. Well, I will keep you to see. That peaked at number 35 on the Hot Adult Top 40 tracks, and it had a resurgence a short time after that. It was part of the American Wedding movie soundtrack. Uh, Blue October had grown their audience really from the ground floor since forming in Texas in 95. As they developed as a band, they were later signed by Universal Records in 1999. Uh, much like how the music of Joy Division, The Cure, The Smiths, and uh, that they would speak to the downtrodden misfits and the outcasts of Generation X, Blue October's music played a similar role for those coming of age in the 2000s and beyond. Burning in my pride, a nervous bleeding in my brain, and I'm so the band just uh, gave hope to the hopeless, as lead singer Justin Furstenfeld wrote directly from his pain. No holds barred, no filter. This struck a chord on a major scale with their first single from Foiled, it was called Hate Me. Now, this song would break through on the American charts, it went to number two on the alternative airplay charts, it was kept out of number one by Red Hot Chili Peppers, Danny California. It also crossed over all over the place, you know, crossed over to the, the pop charts, it hit number 31 in the Hot 100, crossed over to the mainstream rock charts at number 21, and the adult top 40 at number 13. This song was so powerful. It was further enriched by a brutally honest music video directed by Kevin Kerslack, who's directed music videos for everybody from Prince to the Rolling Stones, to R.E.M., Depeche Mode, Nirvana, Smashing Pumpkins, uh, the list is endless. He actually did a recent documentary on uh, Joan Jett. It's well worth seeing. Kerslack uh, tapped into a tragic realism. It just cut to the bone. That, of course, matched Justin Furstenfeld's heart-wrenching music and lyrics to create just a, a mesmerizing portrayal of sound and vision. The music of Blue October is just well worth a listen, especially Any Man in America. That album features a song that... Uh, has seen me through many a dark nights, called the Phil Again Stay. Also check out the album Sway. Sway. Grabbed you by the hips and in home. Oh, in his best work, Justin Furstenfeld has a Peter Gabriel-like tone to his voice, only with a harder edge. Blue October's following continues to grow with music that has just lifted so many out of the darkest abyss. His fans relate very deeply to the albums and the songs. Now, I interviewed Justin about Hate Me, about both the song and the video, and what follows is a very cool, very intimate conversation about the healing effects of music and the story of this song. I know you're gonna enjoy it. As we go into the interview, I do wanna thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear, the glasses I wear all the time. Go design your own pair at zenny.com and add digital blue light protection. You won't regret it. Here's Justin with the story of Hate Me. Hate me today. The thing about you guys is not just about the music too, it's the visual. We've yeah. talked about the album covers and how much that means, but it also is about the videos, you know, right. the artistic piece. Because when videos first came out in the 80s, it was like, okay, you have to do this. And some people felt forced to do it and they just kind of threw stuff out there. But then Peter Gabriel yeah. made it an art, and you guys have followed in those footsteps. So tell me about Hate Me as a song and then about putting the video together and how that visualization came together. Well, after Calling You came, you know, we did like a huge label. Um, the major labels wanted to have us again, so we were blessed and grateful enough to be able to sign another record deal. And um, 
And we just got bigger and bigger, and and um, and I was still with this girl, you know, yeah. Amy. And um, but then I just started going down the wrong path. Started using too many things, and drugs, and drinking, and just getting crazy, and thinking that I was Jean Michel Basquiat, or right, you know, or Kurt Cobain, or or you know, Ian Curtis, or Oh, yeah. You know, and not really thinking, well, those people are dead, so you need to be careful. And, I mean, I just was going way overboard. And um, and I remember, um, you know, I was just a bad boy, and I ended up breaking up with her and um, flew myself out to L.A. and lived in L.A. for about four or five months uh, with my friend Chuck Reed. Um, and I was like, I'm just going to write an album because as soon as I, I let her go, I just realized what hole I was in. Here I am, um, full blown drug addict now, um, alcoholic, like crazy. Um, but not just dabbing, I mean, dabbing in some crazy drugs, like not mind altering, like from getting to where I can't go without it, you know? And, oh uh, yeah, addicted. And oh yeah. And I just start writing about the experience that I was feeling, you know, um, the depression plus adding on self-medication plus the loss of any, everybody that I was, was poignant in my life that got me to where I was, I seemed to push them away. And here I was in this house that I maybe left twice in four months. Wow. Just debauchery, you know, but writing from this place of pure vulnerability and honesty because there's nobody to tell me, no, 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 no. And there was nobody to sit there and go, oh, come here. Right, it right. It was just me, the engineer, and the engineer just did what I said. So wow. it was like, okay. Um, but I remember there was one night when my mom called and uh, she left that message. She's like, hey, Justin, it's your mother. Hey, Justin, this is your mother. I was just calling to see how you were doing. You that message just rang, you know? And, um, and so I wrote Hate Me for Mamie and I wrote Hate Me for my mom because they knew me at that time. They knew that I wasn't up to any good up there but I had this collection of songs that I had been writing. And um, it was literally one of those albums like that almost killed me yeah. because of the hell I put myself through to make. But it's one of those albums that, whew, I'm sure are glad you got through it because it, I worked my ass off on it. Yeah. Was I sober? No. You know, but it was right at the beginning of my drinking and drugging career and um, I was at that, that ledge where it's like, I can handle this. Let me look over. Woo! Yeah. I'll write about it. Let me look over. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> yeah. I'll write about it. And all these people are going, whoa, is he yeah. going to fall? You know? Gosh. So I uh, wrote all these songs. Worked my, I've never worked harder on a record except for Home, the one that we just put out. Some people call me an asshole during recording processes. I made a lot of amends since then for the people I worked with during Foiled. But it was a labor of love because it went platinum. It just blew up, and and the song "Hate Me" just became this anthem for it did for um, lost and sad kids. You know, all you have to do is go to go to YouTube and even look at the comments. Yeah, and everybody told you that your music's gotten me through a lot of stuff. But even just people I know in my immediate family. I mean, my brother-in-law who has struggled um, with suicidal thoughts yeah. and things like that, and had. His dad committed suicide and has had a, his brother did. Wow. He's had this tough, tough go of it. And he, you're his favorite band, you're his favorite singer. What got him through those times when there's so many stories of people and that's what music can be. I mean, it's like somebody was telling me, I think it was Barry Mann and Cynthia Wilde. Yeah. You know, we were performing, we had a show in 2004 off Broadway where, you know, I sang the hits, Cynthia set them up and we had background groups. And in the audience one time was a, a nurse who, was, who, who had spent time in Vietnam. And she wrote to us, and she wrote that every year there is a, a, a get-together, a reunion. A reunion. Mm -hmm. And they all get together and they sing, we got to get out of this place. And it's just, it was so, I had tears it was in my so touch. It was such a touching letter. Yeah, absolutely. So great. I mean, that's when you feel that songwriting is a noble 
it's a noble profession. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, when that happens. Literally, I mean, compared writing. to a doctor, you feel I'm doing something silly. But yes. then when something like that happens, you know, it's no question. So That's much. why I always felt about sociological songs. We weren't doing anything silly. You yes. Know, no, we doing, exactly. You know, yeah. Like then it makes you feel like, well, maybe songwriting is not, you know, it is a valuable thing. And I'm like, hell yes, it's a valuable thing. I mean, but as on. a songwriter myself, I'm so insecure that I think that's an asset for me because I never see the true value of what I'm doing. The others do. Yeah. You know, because if I did, I'd be one selfish prick. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And I'd be one egotistical maniac. So I never really see, like when people tell me use, oh, that's crazy. I'm not even gonna say it in this interview because that's just, that's yeah. just crazy. You did, you were just listening to us. Yeah. That's what I always say, you know, like, yeah. no. You know, I. But then I think, well, Justin, you were sitting there for hours upon hours as a child listening to Asleep from the Smiths. Exactly. And it cried you to sleep, but it you did. woke up the next morning. You did. You got through the night. You know. You know. Sing me to sleep. Sing me. Well, I mean, Hate Me Also, people found it on video games. It was on, that year was on that SingStar video yeah, game, dude. right? And it was, to get this, it was on the level five, the top of them, because yeah, that note. So I was like, to oh, you got to hit that note. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's also a platinum single and it, it yeah. won the ASCAP award too, you yeah. know? The video I, what I, what I loved is the voicemail of holding the answer machine at the beginning and then at the end with the answer machine, beginning and ending with that answer machine. That was Kevin Kerslake's idea. I told him I didn't want a song about me with a bottle of the Jack Daniels and too much drugs and I'm right. dying and the girl says no. <laughs> He's like, oh, it was perfect then, man. What if that message machine was the last thing your mom left you and you were too busy getting to realize that you had a mom out there that needed you? And I was like, what? <laughs> Mind blown. And I go, well, let's take it a step further. Why don't we fly my mom in to do the part? So yeah, she's down her. there and it's crazy. Whew. Thinking about that. And that was really the voicemail. That was really her voicemail and that's really her. That's really her like bawling over me on that floor in that video. Cause she knew that whole time, like this just isn't a song. And, that, and I just always remember Kevin Kerr's like getting that take and then making everybody clear the room. Wow. I was like, oh. And of course me and my mom just sat there kind of laughing, but Kevin Kerr's like was just like, holding my mom and he was just like, that was so beautiful, that moment right there, you know? Yeah. But, you know, I get choked up about that stuff because of the shit I put my mom through, you know, but I'll always watch that video and just be like, man, we made it through. You did. Yeah. I gotta tell you, man, I mean, I love Ian Curtis and and I love these guys, but uh, we're glad you're with us. Man. We're glad you're still with us, man. Thanks, guy. <laughs> I'm, so glad you're not, yeah. I'm glad you're not. I'm glad you're not. I got close, you know, but- that wasn't even the tip of it. That's what's crazy is Hate Me was just the beginning, you know? That's just the crazy part about it. But Hate Me was probably one of the coolest videos we ever made. The message was sent across and it just it resonated with the world. Leave us a comment about this song and Blue October below. If you wanna hear the song, you can in our YouTube playlist below. If you like our content, we do invite you to subscribe. You're gonna love it. You can get Blue October's albums in our Amazon links below. Uh, to see more content like this, click on our Patreon link. Help us keep the music alive. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. Stay safe.